Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of Playing with Pyre. This week's special episode, we have uh, three guests compared to our usual uh, two usual panelists in Zard and Shadowfear, who unfortunately can't be here today. But we do have a special treat with Hydra, Magico, and Santa, three of our top players in Immortal Gates of Pyre. So uh, I'll let you guys introduce yourself one at a time. We'll we'll keep Santa for the end, as he he seems hype about something. Uh, but let's start with Hydra. Hydra, how are you doing? Hey, thank you, man. Um, I'm doing fine. Yeah, pretty good. Good. Um, Hydra, you've uh, Hydra, of course, is our last champion of the one v one invitate at Break the Game Weekly. So a great player of Immortal. So a great player of Starcraft who's doing a lot of tournaments on that side. Our second guest is Magical. You want to say hi, Magical? Yeah, hello, hello. Glad to be here. Cool, cool. Super happy to have you, Magico. Magico, who has been on a tier lately that's won a lot of tournaments. However, he did take a... Before this week's loss, he had won maybe five or six tournaments in a row, except for one loss to our final panelist, which is Santa, our final guest. How you doing, buddy? Uh, oh, no, oh, hello! And yeah, we, hello. we have Santa, the chief of the cult of Walter, who is with us. And of course, not only is he the chief of the cult, he's also a very good immortal player. So thanks for being with us, guys. And yeah. hey, happy to be here. Yeah, yeah. So today we have, a, as usual, playing with Pyre is a fan talk show where we talk about immortal in depth. Uh, we talk about what's happened in last week. We talk about uh, the latest happenings, a bit about the balance. And we did have a very big patch last week. So I think that's going to be one of the big topics we want to talk about. Uh, but before heading into that, uh, of course, our free players here have participated in the last tournament, and uh, today's panelists are actually the top four of that tournament, with uh, Hydra winning it all, Magical coming in second, and Santa winning third place over over myself, and uh, I probably won't be in that top four next week, but I believe in these three guys for sure. Um, how are you guys feeling about uh, about continuing in Immortal? You think you, think you guys are going to stay on top for a long time, Hydra? Um... I mean, it depends on the players, uh, like when Alpha drops, we'll see how many players come. Oh, yeah. But I think um, if I put in good practice, I can uh, stay there, yeah? Yeah, like nice. Like at the top. Nice, nice. On your side, Magico, you've been one of the most active uh, players for a long, long time. And yeah, you've won a lot of tournaments. You just took a defeat to high drive. It was pretty close games. Uh, but you think you can uh, come back on top in, in later games? Yeah, absolutely. Like, it's it's very tricky to play like good consistently right now for me. But uh, the, the most more powerful thing for me is game understanding. I think I'll, I've been like most of my games just pure uh, due to that thing. And if I just keep playing, keep practicing, keep improving uh, the strategies I do, I'll keep. I will be on top forever. Well, not forever, but for <laughs> a long time. Yeah, I believe in you. And then our last last guest, of course, Santa. Uh... You uh, don't have as many wins, but you do have one 1v1 win. So you think you can you have what it takes to dethrone Hydra or Magical? Um, I think so. Uh, uh maybe. And I th also think that um, I'm gonna be able to play a lot more. <laughs> Walter, you betrayed me. You will never betray. Why would you? Do um, I think that uh, once uh, my semester is over and I have more time to practice, maybe I'll uh, get better at the game too. Yeah, that's true. And you aren't as high level as our other players, right? Hydra is, in StarCraft 2, he's a 5.8, 5.9k high GM StarCraft 2 player that's going to keep participating, getting better. Uh, Magical, you're also a low grad master player, right? Yeah, around that. Around that. And Santa, you're a bit lower than that, or? Uh, Diamond 2. Diamond 2, okay, a bit lower. Uh, still, of course, not a, not, a, not a scrub in any sense of the word, but still a decent player. But yeah, Immortal... Uh, definitely one of our top players here which is really cool to see uh before we go on further i just want to switch it up to a few of the announcements that we've had lately with uh, immortal changing it up uh playing with fire is a decently new show this is only the fourth episode uh, the other show that used to happen was uh we used to have the parasite chat that happened every friday it's now going to be only once a month uh the first friday of the month which was last last friday april 1st where they made this announcement of their changes uh, the third Friday, they're going to have the Ruined Archive, where it's a lot about lore. And there's going to be a community game night on the fourth Friday. The other events that will happen is all the Break the Game Weeklies, which 
of course, as the tournaments where these three guys uh, are the great champions that we hope to keep see coming over and over again. Uh, so yeah, just a quick announcement on stuff happening. Of course, we're just a fan podcast where we are lucky enough to have these three amazing guys with us. Uh, but yeah, let's jump in right into the meat of the subject, the latest patch. So, uh, so the latest patch made a few changes and eff- affected the tournament quite a bit. So before we talk about the tournament itself, I just want to talk about the latest patch, the latest patch, and what it changed to the gameplay. So first thing, I just want to mention there were some optimizations on the 3D models of Orzum and Mala. Uh, those things changed just a little, a, a few things there that for people with worse computers is going to help. Uh, help not drain the computer as much, so always good to see optimizations keep on happening. Uh, first change I want to bring in is that pings are now in. Pings uh, that are mostly seen in other other type of, of team games. Uh, what are your thoughts on the on those, Magico? What, what do you think of pings? Of course, not for 1v1. You're pretty good in 2v2 as well. So what are your thoughts on the pings, how they'll impact the game and everything? Uh, so it, it will allow to do like a lot of more maneuvers with a teammate, but uh, they currently have an issue of not having a strong sound connection with pings. So you can ping, but your teammate only will be able to see it only if you look on the minimap. And it's a really huge issue because well, no one really looks on the minimap, right? <laughs> it's pretty difficult to do. Yeah. Okay. So 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 we need so we need some sound to come in to really make that. Yeah. Impact. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. What do you think of uh, the six that we have on the we actually? I'll... I'll pull up this. Oh, shoot, I don't have the six on my screen. Uh, so yeah, there's a few symbols. What do you think would be really useful symbols to have? So we have like attack here, defend. Uh, Hydro, what are your thoughts on like, I know you're more of a 1v1 guy as well, Hydro, but I'm sure you have thoughts on what's an important signal you need to have for, uh, for a, to be a good teammate. What's a, what's a good important ping you need to have to, to coordinate with your teammate? I mean, it depends what you're trying to achieve, but um, like, I guess attack here, defend here, retreat, um, watch here, like stuff like that. Yeah, what a save, like in Rocket League or something. <laughs> yeah, BMing your teammates. Yeah, exactly. that's good, man. No, man, they actually said they're gonna put in the well played, so I'm kind of expecting it to be a bit like what a save, but. I'm excited. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, uh, of course you're not a BM guy, so I don't expect it from you. Uh, Santa, I'm well, sure. Of course you... not. Yeah, no, no, you're actually one of the nicest guys. All, uh, all harbingers of the immortal community we have here. And Santa, I'm sure you have some original ideas on what type of uh, ping pings we could have, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I've been thinking that um, you know, like all those stuff. Um, in Heroes of the Storm, I think they've got a great ping system. Um, I think maybe having like a unique pick like in that game you know if you ping on a mercenary camp it gets a special ping i think if i remember it correctly probably maybe i'm wrong correct me uh if i'm not uh but i think maybe something like that for pyre camps too um could be really nice yeah that's interesting hydra you're also a high level uh heroes of the store do you what do you what do you think of the ping system there yeah it's pretty good like um you have on my way, so you can signal your teammate like you're going to that place. Um, you can say attack here as well. And the thing about the pyre camp or the pyre, uh, like, like the the ping about the the camp, I think it's really good because, um, like you can signal very specific things to your teammate instead of just like ping here or watch here. So I think that's good. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And like in Heroes of the Storm, does it ever happen that you have like something you'd like to communicate, but you can't, like you wish you were in voice or something? Is there stuff that you, you wish you could communicate to your teammates or like besides what a save and well played? I mean, there's a variety of things. Like uh, if you can't be in voice with someone, you can't really do ganks, stuff mm-hmm. like that. Um, there's not really a... Like a missing ping as well. So okay. like my enemy is missing, they might come and two v one you, stuff like that. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah, and then the, well, I guess you could replace that with please come here or something, but it's not quite the same either. Or it's not that mm-hmm. yeah, okay. Okay, interesting. And you uh, do you have any thoughts, uh, magical on the pings? I did you play any heroes actually magical? No, like never in my life. <laughs> but, but but I feel like uh, I can uh make connections to immortal because 
in 2022, two, we also can play some like a gangster, right? We can like make two ar uh, unite two armies together and kill one player, right? It exists in Immortal. Yeah, so the, the pink, the player is missing can be actually useful in Immortal too. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, because often that's what 2v2s come down to, right? The, who gets the best 2v1 on the opponent, then like you just get a crushing victory. And yeah, if you if you can't get two on twos, it's often hard to come back from. Or at least that's been my impression. You know, if you uh, the 2v2 champions underneath me, you agree with me or not? <laughs> yeah, that... probably yes, but like it also like kind of depends. Sometimes you want to play two one v ones. Yeah. Instead of one like big fight. Yeah, okay, just trying to harass lots of flags. Well, anyways, we'll see a lot of that in this uh, week's tournament, 2v2 tournament, where I think you two are the only signed up team, right? Magical Santa? Yep, last time I checked, at least. Yeah. Uh, it'll be interesting. Yeah, me and Mixer signed up as well. Oh, God, are you going to have the return of Throne Sports? No, we have some other readies. Nice. No, okay, that's good. Uh... That's interesting good. would you would you like to share them in advance <laughs> mm, not yet <laughs> i'm curious to see the tournament nah, well yeah you guys are probably the two teams that are favorites actually with fighter makes you the two highest two of the highest well at least the two highest starcraft two active players of immortal with uh makes is what 6k 6.2k or something around that hydra or yeah he's a bit lower now but he's very fast so his skill transfers over to Audio RTS very well. Oh, like yeah. he's a very fast player. Yeah, I know. It takes someone really special to beat him. <clears throat> I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> so yeah, that was uh, the first thing that came into the battle. Was pretty cool. Having pings is really cool. Uh, second one that I want to talk about is the artwork. The artwork has really improved, or at least. It's really improved in two places. The first one, if you guys want to look on my screen, I'm going to uh, change screen just now. You can see the new Fool's Bay map. It's only on the art. It's only right now in the mini map, but it's a pretty nice outlook. What do you guys think? If you uh, look at it, what do you think uh, magical of this new artwork? Oh, with some imagination, so I can see my units walking on the map. Maybe it's not great that there's so much like grass on the map. It's usually like a bit annoying, but generally I think the map looks really cool. Yeah, until we have the real thing, of course. Your any thoughts on your side, Hydra? Um, <clears throat> the map looks pretty cool. Like you have a bit of a desert at the bottom, a bit more forest in the top. Um, yeah, I mean the map looks cool. Yeah, I guess there's not much more, because you guys have played a bit on Fools Bay, but it's more it's like we're not allowed to play on one v one. So I guess for two v two, it's pretty cool. And, once we do have everything, it's going to be really fun to play on, especially that art. Uh, do you have thoughts, Santa? Um, yeah, um, I really love Bulls Bay, um, because it's, uh, it's on Nuos, and, um, Nuos is just such a cool planet to me. Um, I'm really afraid Walter won't stay on my head anymore. Um, I'm really, um, excited just all the, like, the, diversity in landscapes that um, we're already getting with Immortal, like Lost Province of the Desert, and then here it's just so lush. Yeah, sure. Um, just, yeah, lots of variety. Yeah, no, having different biomes is going to be really cool with, like you said, Lost Province only being desert, and this one actually having a variety of, you know, desert biomes and whatnot. And of course, the last one we can talk about, the newest art is, I think we've all played this, the new co-op has a lot of art. I'm just showing the video of Westo, who yeah, at least can show it off. That's here we see the ice biome right now. We can see there's grass biome in the middle of everything. You guys have all played. Santa you Santa, you've also played it, right? Not quite. Uh not since the last update. Darn, they're missing out. Of course. Ooh. Of course. Okay. Magico and Santa, you guys share the record for uh, the high score right now, right? I mean high though. Yes. Yeah, nice. So what are your thoughts on the co-op? Like the co-op has changed. Magico used to play before it was uh, before it was updated. What are your thoughts on the newest changes? Well, actually... I think it become like a lot difficult more. <laughs> like it's actually hard to defend every basis. Like how we used to play, we just make like five bases, defend five bases like easily on this like maximum multiplier. And after that you get a huge bank and you just sit in your main base. It's how we used to play. And now it's a lot harder to secure bases. A lot more units to play against. Yeah, and so yeah, the, the, so it's still like a defend the base. Of course, the map, the, the game didn't actually change. It's still defend the base, but but now there's waves coming and there's a lot of UI UX changes to explain how that happens. Uh, 
Yeah, what would you say is the... So you guys have played a few times and have the highest score. So Hydra, what do you think is the optimal strategy for the co-op map exactly? Do you have thoughts on that? You guys have tried I mean, <clears throat> it's very abusable because um, of the locations of the multiplier buildings. Mm -hmm. Like you can easily maneuver around the buildings defending it with air units. So maybe change like that to make it a bit harder. Okay. Um, I also would like to see a bit more anti-air ground units like hunters or rave bow, instead of just mindless aqua or what are they called? Arox. Arox, yeah. Like instead of Arox, I want to see a bit more anti-air like ground units so you can um, micro again. Like the, the micro interaction between the Arox and the air units is not that fun in my opinion because uh, okay. they you can't really dodge them so. They will connect no matter what you do. So it's just a trade-off, mm. basically. Instead of having to actually micro and stuff like that. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Also, Arox, they like they, they get a move a move command on the building. So if you have Fire Singer somewhere on the map, Arox will just super the aim of a Fire Singer, so it just dies as them. So they're not very efficient. Yeah, so, so we're still in the phase of you're trying to figure out all the things to break the game, basically. <laughs> how, to, how can you oh, use yeah. the system? <laughs> Okay, so, so let's play a game. How do you make it so you can't abuse it? L and let's stay off like having perfect eye because I think that's going to be a long time coming. So I, I like the idea of Hydra to start with of, you know, not have Aerox because Aerox kind of destroy your stuff. But then having the having the, the Sharu or what, what's the what's the late game comp? Is it still a mass Sharu with something else now? Out of Thrones. Thrones are better? Yeah, yeah. So, so it does their job. They do the same job and they don't require mana. Like they can just recharge. Uh, that's true. Okay, cool. So, uh, any thoughts on how to make co-op not, uh, well, you know, less abusable? Uh, b besides that, because, I mean, it. You guys are still the top player, so it's hard to uh, to judge on you guys. But what do you think is the adoption rate for new players? Would it be easy to jump into it without being destroyed and stuff? Um, I think the multiplayer system is really nicely done because newer players they play on low multiplayer or multiplier, mm -hmm. so they don't get absolutely a moved by the AI units. And then the better you get, the faster you kill the multiplayer buildings. So, like, you can choose your own difficulty basically, yeah. which is really nice. Yeah, how would you make? this game harder actually would do you have a way to make it like that that, it, that he could actually pose a challenge for you because i'm guessing right now the challenge is there's just too much shit and there's nothing you can do about it so how would you change it up to make it more challenging for players that are actually really good um i think having a ping system where attack waves are coming from is really nice and then you just make like more attack waves like smaller ones so you have to split your army a bit better than just uh okay. f2 -ing. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Because right now, you, so right now the attack waves mostly come just in one shot, right? Only one place at a time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Well, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Just more splitting. I guess on higher levels you want more splitting, and lower levels can still stay on one. So. Okay. So maybe like multiplier could be more locations instead of just more units or something. Yeah. Yeah. I think that would be pretty nice. Yeah, that's a cool idea. Cool. Cool. Um. And yeah, what you, final thoughts on like having the multiplier. Uh, so it's all about being timed, right? It's a time challenge where you have to survive to wave 15 and limit it to 20. Like, so it shouldn't be take more than 20 minutes. You like, uh, what do you think of that system, Magico? You like that or you want it to go forever or shorter? I really like because it doesn't like take too much time. Uh, I think you can like do the games quite quickly. Uh, I like also the fact that this, um, it's very like, it's really linear, right? Because of attacks coming from one side, right? But mm -hmm. they also kind of spawn uh, on the map and they punish you for maybe bad moves. I also like that. If you like, if don't time your army well, you're gonna like army spawn right inside of you and it's very well punished. I think also a nice thing. Yeah, no, that's true. Oh, cool. Cool. Well, appreciate your thoughts. At least we have Donovan listening in, so. He, he, I'm sure he takes effect of the best players of the game giving their thoughts on co-op, but happy it still poses a challenge for everyone, and, and at the very least, you still have the challenge of hiring the highest score, which is always a tough challenge for anyone. So, 
moving on from the patch, we had the, of course, we just talked about having this, uh, the co-op that got revamped and, and got better. Let's talk about the gameplay changes. So first one I want to just jump into is the deployment changes. So uh, the game changed deployment system from before. Uh, Santa, can you give me, uh, maybe Santa, you can give me an overview of how the deployment system used to be and how it is now. Can, you, can I let you do that? Yeah, um, so how it used to be is, um, well, each unit, um, or each individual deploy unit, you'd, um, it have an ability, like the Magi and the Absolver, they'd have separate keys, and, um, you'd either, um, left-click or right-click to siege or mobilize again, um, but now we've got it so... There's still unique sieges, but there's just one button uh, that you press to mobilize anything you've got sieged up. That's pretty cool. And your thoughts on it? Do you prefer this system to the old one? What are your What are your thoughts on that? Um, I'm still. I I think I need to get more used to it before I can make a good decision on that. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, sure. It's only been out for about a week now. Magical, I, I've, I've, I've seen you've had a few thoughts on it, so want to expand on them? Oh, I was very biased because the new system is how I play StarCraft 2 and I'm really used to it. True. But I think it's still like a bit better, like in a system like with an old interface, there was a thing that is advantage, that is like that thing with click left click to under to deploy click right click to undeploy right in the middle of your screen i think you can distract people like the new system it doesn't have like any like other stuff which distracts you really you just press the siege button and it sieges there's nothing extra and i really like it yeah having one click one less click is always cool uh do you have a preference hydra i'm guessing you're going to be similar to magical given your starcraft background um well i didn't really play that much so Oh, okay. I can't really talk about the deployment changes, but um, if it requires less clicks, I think it's good for newer players because then they get less overwhelmed with all the actions they have to do. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. I I agree with what you guys are saying. I do prefer to do one as well, so take it for what it is. So, yeah, that's the first change. Uh, we've had a few other big balance changes, of course. Uh, I'll go through the craft ones pretty quickly. Uh, so first one, the Shar Ostrich, the outer radius damage was reduced, and its cost was brought up. Um, yeah, well, we can go change by change, actually. Uh, so yeah, I think I've seen Magical, you know that that was a good change in general? Yes, like, it's actually a very correct change as well, because, like, the, the Shar power is, is it's just, if you're a bit not fast enough, you're going to take a lot of damage right away with Hunters, mostly. And uh, even against Zephyrs, actually, like, Zephyrs also take a lot of damage. Everything takes a lot of damage against Shara, right? Yeah. So I think it's very good changes. It also cost, like, obviously, because you can get, like, 8 Shara, like, really quickly, actually, in the game. Especially if you skip a lot of fine tier, like, greedy. You can get so many Sharos, that's, like, it's really hard to counterplay. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It's always been hard to counterplay, and, like... Well, I guess Magical and Sata, you guys have played a lot of Aru, and you've had... At least when I play Aru, I always have difficulty in the end game against Mass Sharu, and I have difficulty finding a solution. Uh, so hopefully this helps a bit. Do you agree? With, like, do you have thoughts on that, Santa, on the Sharu nerf? Or oh, yeah, Sharu nerf exa completely actually. I'm going to be honest. This entire time, I thought it was the radius got smaller, not that the damage was reduced. I completely misread it. Oh okay. <laughs> um, now it makes sense why. Uh. So I was thinking, wow, it doesn't seem that much smaller, even if it's gone from 65 to 20, I think it was. And, uh, uh, yeah, I think this is a good change. Um, they just really, really melted up uh, Mast Hunters. Uh, like, it was a little bit silly. Yeah. I guess Hydra hadn't played much of the latest patch, but did you notice the change from uh, the Sharus with that change, or it didn't affect yeah, you? Yeah, you can very noticeably see the change um i think it's a good one because having super powerful casters uh that are also like semi decent uh like normal fighting instead of like high templars they don't really do damage yeah only with storm and showers can actually like deal damage fly away stuff like that so 
I guess giving one unit a lot of power is not that good because then you can just mass them. Yeah, um, so yeah, I think the nerf was pretty nice. Yeah, it's nice even if it would reduce your chance of winning, but not really because you have other tools, I'm sure. Uh, but yeah, next one. Next one was uh, Dervish had a slight speed nerf. Uh, I, I for one, would argue it probably wasn't enough since it was enough for me to take down Mixu. Uh, what are you guys' thoughts on the Dervish speed nerf? I dread you have uh, a so, uh, oh magical go for uh, it. Uh, so the goal behind behind that was that the Zephyrs don't uh, the the dervish don't can ha hunt uh, hunters anymore basically. So hunters is offering couldn't run away from dervish. And actually, I wanna talk about the other change, uh, the Sipari speed change. It okay. also I think serves the same purpose. They're now slower than hunters, so hunters cannot like uh, can run run away from them. So less punished for like moving out on the map, but uh, I think it was a nice change, but it didn't really do its job because uh, Dervish still destroy hunters completely, and you have infuse right, which kind of can counterplay to the speed difference, right? Yeah, and if you both infuse, then all Dervish still kind of had the advantage there, I guess. But yeah, they'll still get more kills in the end. Yeah, yeah just I like, think the problem yeah, yeah. is more in the infuse than the dervish unit itself. Oh really? Because um, the base movement speed is not that OP in my opinion, but once you infuse dervish, they become super fast, and um, it's very hard to split against them, I guess, and uh, focus them down. Hmm. Yeah. So I feel like the infuse gives them a bit too much power, but the base unit itself is not like super strong. Okay. Yeah. No, no. No. That makes sense. And I have to ask Santa because Santa, what's your favorite unit again? My my beautiful baby dervishes. <laughs> what are your thoughts on that nerf? Um, you know, you know, honestly, I think dervish needed a buff. I think their um, I think their cost needed to go down to uh just fifty mineral or fifty alloys. And no ether. I think their speed should have been buffed to a thousand, and I think they should have done a million damage per hit and attacked air units too. That makes sense. That makes total sense. I agree with that. <laughs> Who wants a difficult game? We'll we'll move to the next unit that did get uh that did actually get buffed. The Zephyr. Uh, do you guys? I did. Did you notice uh, the Zephyr getting a bit more use on your side and use it more, or for you did the change didn't make too much of a difference? Um, I mean. Um... How do I say this? Like in the Kraft versus Ari matchup, yeah, I think they're pretty much needed against Zagal because Zagal are pre pretty strong against everything that uh, Kraft has. Yeah, and like luckily they got nerfed at least. But um, like the problem with the Zephyr is that they cost so much Ether and Alloy that it's really not that worth it to make them in my opinion, and they get pretty hard countered by uh, by units like Resonance, Allowers, um, Shadow. They actually still completely lose to Zakals. Like, Zakals destroy <laughs> Zephyrus. You know, yeah, fight. that's what I mean. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's, you need a lot of micro and good uh, windstep micro like that to yeah. actually fight the Zakal. So Zephyr, like the last, the only unit that can actually fight Zakal, but they still lose to them. At least in the early game, is that it? Well, in the early game, yeah. So I, I feel like um, you have to play defensive as Kref, like Absolver, and have it sieged up before you engage. So, but um, yeah, maybe not now with the Zakal nerf. At least, like I haven't played enough to uh, know the optimal what to do. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Uh, Magico, I've heard you've played a lot more. What are your thoughts on those on on the Zephyr changes exactly? I guess. I'll yeah. get, need a need of one less hit against everything. It's very nice. Yeah. Uh, it's very it's a lot easier to kill stuff with them now. It it, it really feels. Uh, but I don't think that they become like super like meta like play mass Zephyr every single game. You know, so it's a slight change. It's a good change, but it doesn't like change much. Yeah. It's just nice a unit to play this now. Yeah, okay. Well, okay, so just a bit more viable, but still not the optimal composition, which is probably good for a game, right? You don't want the game to be massing one unit forever anyways. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, cool. Uh, you already mentioned the Sipari speed reduce, so that was again for the mass hunter stuff. Uh, 
the absolver has has a new deploy. And, oh, actually, there was a shadow a shadow change where it was in the patch notes where absolvers don't need the house the fading saints to get their to get everything moving to to be able to deploy. They don't need the house of the fading saints. Uh, and we have seen a lot more absolvers in the last turn minute. Be- I would assume because of that. Have you used them, Santa? The absolvers. Um, a little bit more. Um, it wasn't only until a little bit ago that I realized they got that. Um, they don't need the House of the Fading Saints to siege up anymore, and I feel like that's made them uh, a lot stronger. Yeah, and Hydra, what are your thoughts on the absolver, like in general? Despite like this, like this buff basically allows them to be back a bit earlier in the game. What are your thoughts on the absolver? in the current state of the game from what you've played um it's a bit hard to say like uh, it's hard to see the role of the unit because it's supposed to counter light units right but against our you don't really see a light unit <laughs> like you see a call you see um residents and they can like uh, how do you say this like um you can't make the Absolver too strong against armored units, but they don't really, like, you don't really see the light units, if that makes sense. Yeah, because you don't like, see the mass uh, hunters, because they get destroyed by the Dervish, yeah. and then yeah, because yeah. of that, he makes the calls, and then the calls, well, they they just destroy the <laughs> the Absolvers, even with their nerf, more or less. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I also want to, like, I don't know if that's the right timing for now, but I had an idea of... The, um, Go for the it. Zephyr yeah, by yeah, go for it. Making them shoot slower, but giving them more damage. So you can um, go snipe stuff like with a few Zephyr and then blink back or win step back. Yeah. Instead of having them like shoot like medium fast, but not like the damage, so it doesn't feel like a sniper unit basically. I think it would be. Pretty cool to have their damage buff, but their attack speed nerfed, so yeah. they can act more like a sniper unit against uh, specific targets like the resonance or something like that. Yeah, so a bit more like the stalkers just jump in to, see, to snipe the siege tank, then run back afterwards or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. or like snipe unit and win the back, something like that. Yeah, that makes sense. Thoughts on that, Magical? Yeah, I kind of agree with that because, like, if you compare like Zephyrus to Stalkers, right? Stalkers like get their power like through a very high mobility, right? But Zephyrus they don't have that. They're very slow, clumsy units. They so the only like micro you can have with them right now is just blink back one by one, basically, and that's it. But if they get more damage, I think yeah, it's very good change, probably theoretically, for like the snipe purposes. I really like the sound of it. Yeah, cool. No, no, contribution hydro like it. Yeah, because we do have, because I'm assuming like a lot, there's going to be a lot of units that are going to have a teleport-like ability. We have the Bloodbound that has it. Uh, of course, that one's a melee unit. So I'm curious if they're going to come up with more snipe units. We also know that the next, uh, there's going to be the next Immortal for Croft is going to be, uh, it's going to have a replacement for the for the Dervish, which is going to be more of a, there's going to be more blinks possible, uh, more wind steps possible at a time. So it's going to be a bit the opposite of what you were talking about, I'm, I'm assuming. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the Acros is going to be basically that just a unit that can tell that also has a blink, but faster blink, and it also gets cloak on blink, I think. So, a few extra tricks in its sleeve. Uh, is it like, um, does it have a release date yet, or no? It's what's well, probably going to be in beta. It's just in the future. Yeah, yeah it's one of. Those. It's rash on third immortal probably. Of course. Yeah, exactly. So okay. Yeah. Yeah. Don't think we're getting third immortal too. Well, we're going to get Jora first, and then. Well, it... Like hearing that, I think the like my proposed change is pretty good. I think like, yeah. uh, to make it more of a sniper unit instead of a generalist unit. Yeah, just generalist instead. It turns to sniper. Well, still a generalist because it can shoot anything, but it can actually have a bit more of a purpose. And then, yeah, 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 especially because they're so expensive compared to better units. Yeah, actually, because you can just go Siparius and Tari for, I mean, for for normal fighting at that point and have that one actually focus firing down the units while this is entire Sipari do damage again well take damage yeah i think that's like a really nice change cool i like it uh the last few changes for crafters magi are now less supply they also have uh, less shields a bit less dps uh and i think well hydra you've experimented with the with D- magi dps before and the heal is going to be changing fat is going to be 
faster, but a bit less healing from it. So you can heal more often, but it's just not going to heal as much. So similar-ish, just going to expand their mana faster. Uh, but yeah, I remember Hydra used to just make mass magi or something. I mean, <laughs> it was a bit of a troll, I guess. But um, like, I think it's a good change. Like they um, like deplete mana faster, so they don't feel like indestructible with the healer. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's a good change. Yeah. Your side, Santa, have you uh, tested anything new with the Magi since that change, or it's not something you notice that much? So it's not. Um... <laughs> well, it is not a dervish, but um, I've been using them a lot more since they cost less supply now. Um, that's been yeah. just, I feel like having them cost three supply has been a really good change. Very nice. Yeah, makes sense, because you can just put a few more into your army by that way, right? So, just let's take for mm -hmm. Cool, cool. Uh, final changes, uh, the Saoshin... Actually, we haven't really talked about the Salshin rework at all. So the so the Salshin used to be uh, giving damage protection. Now it does it it, it does healing. It, it does a lot of healing instead. What do you guys uh, thoughts on that change, especially Magico? If you've uh, I think you were a proponent that Salshin was a bit too powerful before, or there was some stuff that was uh, not overpowered necessarily, but kind of. Uh, what are your thoughts on the Salshin yeah. rework? Uh, like it used to be a unit which had every single role in the game. It was zone control. It was this launcher. It was like a saver. It had it could save your units, right? It could completely change all fights, like completely. It's a game changer unit. Right now, uh, it has like specific role, and I think it's a unit which is very good this combination with Arc Mother specifically. So you get a damage reduction from Arc Mother, and you heal units into this like damage reduction zone. It's a very good combination, which allows for units to stay long. But it's also not like one unit does it, right? It's a combination of units, because how we used to, like, we didn't use Arc Maza whatsoever. And why would we use it when you have uh, Sao Shin, which yeah. does all the job, basically? Yeah, no, it's a world that has everything, so. And the Sao Shin, like you said, is still very useful with its uh, thing. And you like the jump ability and all that, it's a cool use of it. No, oh, I didn't really use jump for jump, really. <laughs> Okay, yeah, you don't. Sometimes maybe it's useful. I don't know. Yeah, I, I haven't seen that much use of it. And yeah, Arc Mother, as you said, is a bit faster. It's going to be good for it. Uh, but yeah, I think that's it for the Croft big updates. Let's move in right into Aru. So the big one, the the big, big nerf that uh, hit the Zakal. Its boost attack is only 50% instead of 100% for its uh, free extra damage boost. Uh, have you played much with it, uh, Magical? I think, uh, I, I think you faced it a bit at least or used it as, you, as well. Yeah, uh, the calls they still work, they still pretty strong. And like I uh, arrow versus arrow, it's still kind of impossible to skip them. If you tie open with hunters, you're gonna die. It doesn't change. Uh like as I probably as I should be less like oppressive now when you just can't move on the map as curve whatsoever against the calls. But now I think it should be a little bit better. So like curve players can get some pyre, move on the map at least a little bit. But it's like Sipari, Zephyr, something like that. Yeah. And Yhydra, do you still think they're a bit too strong? Like you were saying, you had to get Zephyr, so do you think like they might be a bit too strong for now? Uh, I'm not sure. Like I, I didn't play enough yet to say the, say stuff about that. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, you still want to play it more. Santa, like I don't want to uh, yeah. jump to conclusions. No, for sure. I mean, it's just first impressions right now. Because, uh, of course, the patch is only not even a week old, I think. So, of course, we can't be definitive about any balance uh, things. The 100% seem too strong, 50% is a bit less. Uh, Santa, you've been playing against... Uh, you mostly play uh, Orazum, right, Santa? Mm hmm So thoughts on the Zakals? Does it let you go on the map a bit more now, or you haven't ch felt it that much? Um... Um... I guess I haven't felt it that much, but, I mean, just looking at the numbers... You know, fifty percent is a lot less than a hundred, so I think it's, um, or what I um, what I do, um, I think it makes it a lot easier to get your first tower up at your natural if they go for like uh some aggression, hmm. and you know there's like that little gap of time, uh, just before your tower is done, uh, and your Zentari needs a hollowed ground. I think that's been really good for that. Yeah, that makes sense. No, no, I, I, I can agree with that. 
Uh, but yeah, Zakao, small nerf, and they're still very useful, so at least like they keep their use, which is what we want. We don't want the unit to just be useless either, so I'm curious to see how it goes. How does the Zakao uh, go into late game? Does it does it scale well, or do you guys... Oh, no, no, not at all. Not like, though. it's getting destroyed by everything. I uh, still need it as Kuraf to not to die against the Irish, but that's all the purpose it has in late game. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so so it's really just still a very early game unit that just drops off. Uh, can you yeah, guys... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can you guys think of something that could, like some type of uh, other research that could be used for it to make it useful into the late game, or is it just too expensive or something, or what? I think dropships, uh, when they come out, will help them a lot, because they're pretty good to rest unit. All right. And also probably snipers with their the boosted attack, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. like, the dropships are going to change the game completely, I think. Yeah, like, I think uh, it's going to be a lot more small battles everywhere instead of one big army against one big army yeah a bit more dynamic for sure um okay cool cool nice thoughts uh next unit let's go to the icor so the icor has a, changed its uh, upgrade to have a slow zone instead of having extra shields and the slow zone actually slows all the units not just your your opponents um what do you think of that santa slowing down your dervish a lot uh, probably don't like that even if your ally slows down your own dervish my dervish <sighs> My speedy, speedy boys. Terrible. <laughs> evil. Um, now, I'm really excited about the um, Icor slow zone. I think it's a really creative, um, really interesting um, ability. Uh, I think it's gonna t that one's going to take us a long time to figure out how to use it effectively, but um, I bet that there's going to be a lot of cool stuff you can do with it. What do you think the purpose of it is if uh, adding a slow zone like that? Do you think uh, there's something like the definitive purpose? Do you, do, can you think of something or just like a cool ability in general? Well, something I thought of is uh, maybe trying to like um, kind of using them just a couple of I cores to flank a big army, like to just set up their slow zone around a corner. And then when they try to retreat, they get stuck on there. And, um, yeah, just sort of going for not really flanks because the Ikers are going to probably get killed in a big, I guess, a big death ball, but just set up ahead of time to prevent a retreat. Yeah. No, that's cool. No, yeah, sure. We're saying retreat of Underspined as well, something we've seen some attempts at, but not that successful sometimes. Uh, but yeah, the slow zone, it's probably one of the first, it's, it's one of the first ability that's, uh, doesn't that also damages your own your own ally, which is something Immortal has been steering clear of. Uh, thoughts on that Hydra and having something attack your allies in a game that's going to have a lot of 2v2? What, what do you think of it? Uh, I think it's very unique, honestly. Um, like, you need to play around it with your ally if you want to uh, play like that. Okay. But I think it's a very interesting unit that has a lot of potential. Yeah. I think the big issue with Iker is that the slow zone is nice, right? But there's an alternative with that sisters and root. And why would you use Ikers if you have root? Like it doesn't make too much sense to me. Like so the advantage is that Iker cost less ether, right? So it's more of early game buff, I guess, to your army, so you can make them faster before the Red Sister appear on the map. But also the slow zone less effective against less supply, right? Yeah. So I think it's pretty hard to use actually. Yeah, especially takes like first. I guess we haven't figured out how to do it yet. Maybe in the future. Oh yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing you try it off. Uh other changes. Uh Behemoth have less shields, more HP, their bits uh they don't slow on fire anymore, so Behemoth should be a bit easier to use with uh, slightly more HP and less shields. Uh, so the if they take damage, it's gonna be it's gonna be permanent, of course. So that hurts a bit more. Uh, don't know if there's much talk about that. Behemoths, have you have you guys seen a lot of Behemoth played? That it seems to have disappeared a bit, but sometimes late. Uh, I've game. not seen any Thrones or Behemoths <laughs> okay. in my games. No Thrones or Behemoths. Okay, Magico on your side. <laughs> I might them. I might them a lot. I might a good use of them sometimes in specific situations. But I also think I wasn't really hard counted by Castigators yet. So I think like the issue with uh, Behemoth uh, Castigator interaction, it still stays. I can't really tell how exactly it goes, but I think it should be rough for Behemoth still. Okay, yeah. Uh, the, and then the under, okay, next change, underspine radius was increased, the range increased as well. Um, slows up to 50% instead of 40%. Uh, 
And yeah, so it's a nice little change, a nice little buff for the underspine. Um, I guess Hydra, you haven't seen much use of underspine either so far, or you've seen some now. No, I've not seen anyone use it yet. <laughs> okay, yeah. Mixer did it on the tournament, I think. Yeah, no, he did. He did. But yeah, he, he couldn't make it far enough. <sighs> Uh, <laughs> hey man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna milk that as much as I can because it's not happening again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It could or happen. Is it? Not. No, I. Well, if he comes back to the game and started playing it, it's gonna be tougher to do it again because, yeah, Mixu, as Hydra said, is on another level. <sighs> you didn't make the cow, thank God. Uh, next unit, that uh, next big change, the Burfing Storm rework. Uh, magical. Your thoughts on that? Well. Tell me what the Burfing Storm rework is and uh, what are your thoughts on it. Uh, so how it used to be, it just created like a zone. If you stand in it, you're gonna take like 80 damage in total. And like also if your units die during that, you're gonna turn into Quittles. Now, uh, the damage actually pretty similar, but it goes not into shields, it goes straight into HP itself, into life. And also it's damage which impossible to dodge after like stand like in this circle. So if you're gonna like tagged by its ability, you're gonna you're gonna take damage both times. Uh, and it's actually the most I think significant. Not, not even the critical change actually. I think that, that the fact it does guarantee damage actually what make it so good. So like if it also two shots every single unit in the game. So if the fight lasts longer than eight seconds, your unit's gonna die guaranteed. <laughs> So it's very rough to play against. On top of that, it spawns a lot of Quittles right now. Okay. So it's like really a lot of Quittles. Like I think it's possible to expect if you use like Dead Sister Incubators, to expect every single fight like 20 plus Quittles. Like it's a lot, a lot. Yeah, 20 Quittles like, yeah, so you get like damage protection on top of it once it spawns, okay. Uh, but I guess... Yeah, I, I would like to talk about it actually. Like that's the exact same thing that I don't want on units like that, like the Sharu for example. Yeah. Like, um, you guys want to, or you guys, well, Immortal wants to um, make it easier for players, right? Yeah. So I think adding huge AoE, high damage casters, um, I don't know, like, it's very hard to play against that, yeah, especially yeah. Yeah, if you're uh, newer. Yeah. So, I don't know. That like, I have not seen it that. yet before, but the damage sounds ridiculous. <laughs> And also, like, even the fight ends, it doesn't mean you're gonna survive. So, even after the fight, you're gonna get like last hit by Birthing Storm and half yeah. your army dies in the end. I think it could be very frustrating. Okay, yeah, so, so a bit too much of a buff for now. I mean, beforehand, yeah. it, was, it, it wasn't used, it, before that was maybe a bit too weak, right? And now it's just too strong, so it's like we wanted more in the middle or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, um, um, yeah, like huge AOE spells. I don't know. I'm not a fan of them. Like the the throne spell, which was in the past, the Shari spell, the Burning Storm. Like they, they can punish people super far, super hard. Yeah. So, I mean, like those are still cool moments. Huh? So maybe like a way to balance might be to just I don't know have the skill shot take more time or something. Like add them, have them like uh, slow and deal damage over time or something like a zoner instead of a raw damage. Okay, yeah, so it's more the raw damage. So, like, for example, the Sharu, the after effect with the Tempest, it's, the, the all strike is pretty cool because you just fire, you don't want to jump in that, and you can just run out. Yeah, yeah, like, it zones a bit out. Like, it doesn't one-shot your units okay. like the throne did, but it's it just zones a bit out. Like, I think that's really nice. Okay. Instead of just outright killing your units. Yeah, killing all your units is pretty... Yeah, Bane Link Syndrome, we don't want that again. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... But yeah, uh, the last change was like Arox more damage on the burn, less on. They do a bit less damage to light and medium units as well, and like most damage is in the after effects of the straight shot, which is a bit in line with what you're saying of not getting everything die in one shot. But I mean, they're still gonna die. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thoughts on the Arox in general, actually, because Arox are like sacrificial units in the eye, they're more mix of scourge and banelings. What, what do you guys think of that unit? It's a fun one, but does it have a good use? Does it? Uh, is it? Is it a good air denial in general? I mean, well, it makes, no. uh, like especially against Taras yeah. units. Like, um, if we're talking one v one, I think, in my opinion, Trumps are just better because um, they have more potential. Like, they can do do harass themselves. They can clear wardens. Um, they provide scouting. 
instead of just you make one unit and it does only one purpose and that's to kill like your opponent's air units. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, and that's also a thing about the the sentinel. Like the sentinel is purely yeah. there to counter trumps, and then after you did that, they become useless. Preferred. So yeah, I don't yeah. Know. the sentinels will have. It's because it has ability. Yeah. Ability missing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to having like the point defense drone ability on the sentinel. It's gonna be uh, like you said, it's gonna have a dual utility instead of just being that. Uh, Santa, you had some thoughts as well, right? On that, on the Aerox? Well, it makes for some great Wistopoli clips. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> um, sniping the Charos is fun. Yeah, sniping the Charos is great. Um, I think that, um, you know, Arax um, can be really fun, uh, like getting into a sort of a game where you're trying to um, either split against the Aerox or um, try and like have some castigators on the ground to snipe them before they get to you. Uh, I think it can lead to some fun dynamics. Yeah, no, true. True, having being able to shoot on the ground is also a pretty fun thing. Do you have a, any thoughts on the Arox in general, Magical? Do you use them like? I I'm the greatest Arox hater. Like you you would never find it. Tell us a reason more. I think they're extremely not cost efficient. It's extremely hard to like trade, find the good trades with them. And also, like Hydra said, it's like hard to deal with harassment. It's not optimal to deal with harassment. Frams are better. Yeah, okay. And to kill like Sharrows, it's not cost efficient. Like in theory, it is cost efficient, but in reality, half of your Arox just die before they get to any Sharrow. Yeah, that was kind of my impression. So, what do you want to see change for the Arox to be more efficient? Is there anything? Because I mean, they're sacrificial units; they have to be somewhat effective. But yeah, it's just it's just a hard thing to balance. Do you think? Like maybe the usage should be like to like shut down like Shadow Count for a moment. So imagine you want to take a big fight, but there's Shadow which don't allow you to attack right away. So you want to like use your Arox first to kill the Shadow, and then Shadow cannot like. Destroy your whole army, basically. Oh, yeah, that's cool. That's a cool idea. But, but, but how to do that in practice? It's kind of hard to imagine. Okay. Like, gives them more speed. Or something. I say the heart. I don't think they want need more speed. Like, uh, yeah, no. heart. Yeah, I feel that too. Well, in any case, we did just finish covering the patch, which you spent most of the episode when I really wanted to talk about the tournament in the end. Uh, but we're still going to talk about tournament at least for now. So I'm going to open up the bracket that we have on challenge. Uh, where we see uh, the great champions. So uh, we see on the top of the bracket with Magical in the first position that made your way all the way to the finals against Hydra where you ended up falling. Hydra, you started the ball of bracket in third position and went for your round. We can see a lot of, uh, well, you see a few of Magical's games through, um, we, we saw a few of Magical's game on stream as well. At least you saw the ones against me and against Hydra. Uh, we didn't see much of Hydra's play so how how was your route to the finals, Hydra? You started against Cute Little Puppy Dog. How 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 did that turn out? Um, like I said, I didn't really play much, so that was basically my first game of Immortal. <laughs> God, okay. And a pretty long time, so I had to get used to all the hotkeys because they changed all the hotkeys. Yeah, which was really annoying. <laughs> um, uh, I mean, yeah, it was just playing safe. Um, Go up to three, four, five bases, and then like get small victories here and there. That was basically what I did. Because yeah, I think the interesting part is mostly going over your play style. So Hydra, you're the defensive king right now. That's what you try to go for, right? You just try to play as defensive as possible. Is that kind of kind of a good uh, explanation of your gameplay patterns? Or? Uh, well, I, I try to be least. Like sometimes I get a bit uh, tunnel vision. In what sense? And, like uh, I try to punish something like too hard, and then realize I can't, and then I have to like expand and stuff like that. But um, like in in this meta, I feel like you're forced to stay two base a bit, especially against the call timings. Yeah, okay. So it's a bit like like I said, like I I don't have any games, so it was hard to um, like look or know the exact meta and exact build order. So it was just a bit like prying and trying. Yes, yeah, so you got to try against cute little puppy dog and light forger. See, so, yeah, so so most of your runners figuring out how exactly you wanted to figure out the, how to play now without seeing much in how many months since you last played seriously, like maybe almost a year or not quite that far, I guess. 
like uh, two three months i think okay. like, but um yeah i think i was mostly scared of some kind of cheeses people came up with so yeah. i was very um Safe. like scouting around the map like yeah. i remember i think it was santa Sounds that like santa. made a proxy base santa is that you? yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, that like stuff me. like that. Like, I was very, um, very aware people might try something like that. Yeah. So Santa, what is your playstyle for making it to a uh, top top four, well top three? Um, a lot of dervish infectors. Um, just try and get a lot of um workers killed. <laughs> um, and then try and like just off of that. Try and get for like the bigger, the bigger death ball. Um, just try and yeah. get all the workers win the attrition war. Yeah. Okay. So do a lot of harass and go into attrition war, and then just build the bigger army from there because well, you kill more workers and you can do it. Okay, that's cool. And I guess beforehand survive without anything <laughs> as much as possible. Yeah. No, that makes sense. And magic, I think you have the most polished playstyle since you've been playing the most. Can you can you describe your playstyle a bit? I'll define everything, uh, be as greedy as possible, and then get economy advantage, and out of this economy advantage, uh, kill your opponent. That's basically, is to cut it short. So just have the killer instinct at that point, just figure out exactly how to get, when you have enough of a lead, and just kill kill your opponent. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, so you had like an interesting run, but like... Uh, so let's talk a bit about the finals. The finals, we can see it in the VODs, of course. Uh, but it's fun to have both of you here to talk about a bit. So, uh, so what ended up happening for uh, for Hydra to just ended up winning on you, Magical? Like you I, it was a surprise game. Like I said, I think I might fly single in his vision. It was a huge error by me. It wasn't supposed to happen. And also, uh, after that, the game was kind of over. Like it was a funny pillar in the end, <laughs> but uh, the game was over by that yeah. point. Yeah, <laughs> no, that was the funniest moment of the tournament for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember that. That was great. Yeah, yeah you probably weren't expecting uh, to open on. <laughs> but yeah, like he had no E for a unit, so even if the pillar, like this entire lift, I think the absolvers would finish the base. Yeah, no, for I, I think so too. I think that game was over, but you know, it's it's a dramatic ending. It was fun to watch at least. And... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and in the second game, what what ended up making it work for you, Magical? <laughs> Oh, I out expanded and also like my harassment was great and then he had no like anti units like magic don't count the acceptance yet like it yeah um that was a very like uh how do you say this magical played very greedy like I should have definitely split units and harassed him from the other bases and I got that very idea. um very ton of vision again like I had like three k army more. And I was just brute forcing my win while I was losing economy to two two fish for no reason. <laughs> but yeah, that was just pure yeah. tunnel vision. Yeah, like, yeah. And magical like played well as well. You no, know, for sure. No, that's something I realized. Is sometimes you just overcome. Well, don't back off. You're like, okay, did I do enough damage? And just keep going and going and going. And yeah, yeah. I guess just you need to play more. Again, you just need to get back into a mortal to figure that out. Or yeah, no, and no, I, I just don't have vision too hard. Like I, yeah. I lost every every single mineral line to to Dervis yeah. because I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> no, no, no. It was a great game for Magical as well as you said. And then final game, Magic Hydra. You did end up winning that one. Uh, so what happened in that game? I mean, that game was very close. I think. Yeah, I think <laughs> like um, at the end, I spotted his three resonance with my flying T pool or something, and I, I just went for it with infuse. Like uh, it was very close, in my opinion. Your, your I think it could be longer if, like, I I, I knew that kind of gave up everything and counter attack probably more, and give up my throat, give up my natural, and try to like do so much damage at your home so you can't recover from it. I think it was the best play. I couldn't defend my bases, and I tried to, and I lost because of that. But I think I was in a good spot in the end before I started losing everything. No, no, it was a really interesting game. Um, yeah, final games I want to talk about. Santa versus Hydra. That game one went out, I don't remember how long exactly. It was really, really long. Uh, Santa, what do you think you could do different to win that game? Do you have any thoughts on that? Like uh, the ultra late game armies and stuff? 
Um, yeah, I have never been in that late of a late game of a situation before. I didn't even. I went back and looked at the VODs. I didn't know that you could go over 10k in army value. Um, I thought that it was like 9,000 was the maximum uh, with 160 supply. That, um, yeah, really new experience. I think, um, I don't remember if this was game two, one or game two, but for a while there, um, I ended up having like a 2k uh, army lead, but I still didn't end up going in. Um, and I ended up just loot falling behind the economy. Um, so I think maybe just getting some better killer instinct, um, like magical, would probably uh, have really helped out there. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I had any thoughts on those extra long end games, late games? Yeah, Santa played like a mech style, like low economy, high tech units, which was kind of annoying. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, it was very well done. Like he. Um, he stayed in the game for a long time. Like he really made me work for it. But yeah, mm -hmm. um, I also like try to make Zephyrs work, and they just don't work against Mech, like oh. Mech units, like Hollower, yeah. um, Scepter. Like Zephyrs are just not good against that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like that's basically it. Like I, I just sat back, expanded more, and then waited for him to like attack one of my bases. Yeah. Last question for you, Hydra. Are you going to start playing again more, or there's just too much StarCraft 2 events right now that you can't concentrate on both? Uh, I will play the qualifiers very seriously next, like the 2v2 and the 1v1. Nice, but nice. after that, I want to try for Dreamhack again, which is next month. Yeah, I know that makes sense. Oh, cool. Cool, cool. Um, maybe after that, I'll come back to Immortal and uh, practice yeah. a lot more if there's like alpha. bigger tournaments. Yeah, we might be close to Alpha at that point. That could be cool. Especially since. Of course, these four tur these tournaments are for the qualifiers for mystery events, so we don't know. Uh, yeah, you technically the four of us are pretty well placed for them, but uh, I think you three of you are going to qualify, and I'm going to get pushed off by Mixu or something. But we'll see what happens. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I think this is going to be towards the end of the episode. It's been a bit over an hour, so really thank you guys for coming on last minute like this. I just called you about three four hours ago to to jump on. Uh, do you want to plug your socials? Uh, Hydra, do you, do you have anything to plug and say? Um, well, thanks for having me here. I don't really, like, I guess you can follow me on Twitter, but it's not that needed. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, Magical, of course, one of our, uh, the, pretty much the most active players, except maybe for Salt, who's been playing a lot more lately, but Magical has been our most active player for a long time, so thanks for coming on, Magical. Do you have uh, anything you want to plug as well? Oh, no, no, not really. Like, okay. all my social media blocked, so can I do that? <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Okay, sounds good. Thanks for coming on, Magico. And finally, uh, Santa, do you have a Walter you want to plug or something? There we go. Walter. <laughs> and yes, if you want to hear more about Walter, of course, join the Discord, and Santa will tell you all about her. On that note, Walter. thank you, everyone, for watching. And uh, yeah, this was Playing With Fire Episode 4, and uh, good night. Bye-bye. Good night. All right.